I was thrown in the lake in the middle of winter. I was in the most deepest despair you, you can ever imagine. Scientology has a policy that forbids its members from contacting law enforcement in the event of a crime. Hello, this is Mike Rinder. I was formerly the international spokesperson for Scientology, and I spent a good deal of time at St. Hill Manor in East Grinstead. Um, I can tell you that I was the victim of uh, abuse that occurred on that property, including being thrown in the St. Hill Lake in the middle of winter. But more importantly is what is going on there today, which is a constant violation of individuals' human rights. There is human trafficking occurring on that property at St. Hill at this very moment, and it will continue until government agencies step in to stop it. Sea organization members of Scientology are victims of human trafficking. They are being held in circumstances where they are cut off from the outside world. These people are right there at St. Hell right now. My name is Claire Headley. I was born into Scientology in England and spent the first 30 years of my life growing up in and then working for Scientology's SEER organization, whose members have committed to a billion years of service to Scientology management. For 14 years, I worked at Scientology's headquarters at a 500-acre secure compound located in Gilman Hot Springs, California. For eight of those years, I worked in Religious Technology Center, also known as RTC, which is the highest ecclesiastical organization in Scientology run directly by David Miscavige, Scientology's leader. On May 3rd of this year, because of my extensive knowledge and firsthand experience with Scientology's practices and procedures, I testified as an expert witness in a criminal case in Los Angeles, California. This case included three charges of forcible rape. Today, I will speak about some of my experiences growing up as a child at St. Hill in East Grinstead. My mother joined Scientology's SEER organization when I was four years old. From age four to age 10, I was in Scientology's cadet organization at St. Hill, where children of Sea Org members were prepared and trained for their own billion year contract of service to Scientology. There was an extreme lack of adult supervision, and abuse and neglect were commonplace. Scientology has a policy that forbids its members from contacting law enforcement in the event of a crime. This was my experience starting as a child at St. Hill. Starting at age six, I was the victim of abuse at the hands of older cadets. None of this was ever reported. My friend, at age seven, was assaulted by a male staff member on the grounds of St. Hill. Again, this crime was never reported to law enforcement. Also during these years, my mother was assigned to the Rehabilitation Project Force. This meant I was not allowed to have any contact with her for several months. This was a punishment for not following the rules of the Sea Org. During this time, my mother worked on the construction site that was at St. Hill. She was hit in the head and had to be rushed to the hospital due to a lack of proper safety precautions and equipment. I was charged with nursing her back to health as an eight-year-old. In 2005, I escaped from Scientology with the clothes on my back from the headquarters in California. I was chased across state lines and almost intercepted and prevented from leaving. Fortunately, I succeeded. In the years that have passed since then, I've dedicated my life to exposing the destructive practices and abuses that Scientology perpetrates. As a result of this, my family and I have been the victim of Scientology's practice of fair game. They have relentlessly worked to destroy our business, destroy our livelihood, and have used our family who remain in Scientology to spread lies and false information about us. Scientology is a dangerous organization. Please do your research and know 
what they do, and how they operate before you offer any support to them. It is critical that you research and know how Scientology operates and the destructive practice and abuse that they perpetrate. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Turi. I am originally from Toronto, Canada, where I was born and raised. I spent three years as a member of the Church of Scientology, and from May of 2007 until May 2008, I spent the last year of my affiliation as a staff member in the Berlin and San Francisco organizations. This story is about me going to St. Hill, and I'll be as brief as possible uh, and only focus on the important aspects. But I did get a chance to visit St. Hill in East Grinstead on the 24th of December in 2005. I do believe that there are some good qualities in your city that despite Scientology being there, um, the town that you're in was very beautiful and I'm sure that there's a lot of positives there as well. It just happens to be mine and a lot of other people's stories are negative. So I had visited London for the very first time. I took a flight from Berlin and the next day I decided because I was in Scientology, I would go down to see St. Hill which is a very important aspect and part of that organization. So I remember taking the train down from Victoria Station. What really was um, the most frustrating and painful aspect of that experience uh, of that day was the fact that I thought that I was only going to be in St. Hill for an hour or two just to visit and come back. But I ended up staying in St. Hill for almost six hours. And the reason that I had stayed down there was because I was caught in what is called a reg cycle, which is basically a sales pitch. Um, and, and I was very much pressured into buying a product, which is referred to as a Congress. A Congress is a series of lectures that L. Ron Hubbard gave throughout the 1950s and 60s. And just to sort of put this in perspective, um, I was not interested in buying this particular product. And so my one hour, maybe two hour visit had turned into six hours. Now that wasn't just it, just being pressured in order to buy something that cost 125 pounds at the time, which was money I didn't have. However, um, when it, when I uh, had asked to go visit an ATM, of course, the Sea Org members that were there rushed to my position took me into a car and took me into your very beautiful town and um, took me to a Barclays where I proceeded to pretend that, you know, I couldn't get money out of my account. Of course, disappointed, they took me back and eventually, for somehow, I ended up just paying this 125 pounds in order to buy this series of lectures that I didn't want, that I had no uh, aspiration in order to buy just so I could get these Sea Org members off my back. Um, however, when it came time to leave, okay, I thought maybe because a bunch of Sea Org members had come to me uh, and drove me to an ATM to get money, I thought maybe they would do the same um, during my exit of St. Hill and they would drive me to the train station. Of course, that did not happen, and I had to order a taxi, and of course I had to wait in line and very, very frustrated, I waited in line with a number of people who equally seemed as frustrated and as upset who had bought things that they really didn't want. So the summary of my um, six hours there um, was that I, uh, you know, had a very interesting image of your town, um, which, again, I think is a very, very gorgeous town. I really, you know, wanted to see more, but I only saw the main road, the main street, and I only saw, you know, the train station. Um, and St. Hill itself is very cut off. Of course, you must know that they also have a refractory where they have food and sort of that takes away from people being able to go to local restaurants and pubs and so forth in order to, you know, eat and, uh, and, and buy products that would support your city rather than just supporting St. Hill. So in the end, I, I left very, very frustrated. I did not have the best time. And even to this day, I haven't been back neither to England or East Grinstead or St. Hill or Sussex or any of that area because I have kind of a bad taste in my mouth on the 
uh, pressure that I was under and also the uh, unforgiving nature of the Seorg members in your in your very, very pretty town, very gorgeous town. So for me, I know as a staff member that high pressure sales are sort of par for the course and um, that it's really tragic because there's a lot to love um, about your town and about you know, uh, England and everything. And yet there's just this rotten organization there that just sours people's experiences, such as my own. My goal in the future is to return to East Grinstead where I can actually spend more time in the areas that are not St. Hill, where I can experience your culture. Um, I can go to local restaurants and pubs and supermarkets and actually walk around and perhaps talk to the local people, um, which I think would be very poignant to those on the city council and the town council, I should say, in your area. Because um, in my case, again, I've been putting off a return for 15 years, and I actually would really, really like to return to see what your town has to offer, despite having this uh, organization that just breaks up families and it gives people high pressured sales and puts them in these type of positions where when they leave St. Hill or when they leave East Grinstead, they were going to have a negative experience. Because I know that there are good things, uh, good people uh, and good experiences in your town and in your area that can be had. Well, my name is Bonnie Woods and I was recruited into Scientology in 1972 and I left in 1982 and moved to West Sussex. And then I moved to East Grinstead in 1993, and I lived there for 13 years until 2006. My husband and I had a Christian ministry. Well, we still have it, but um, thanks to people like yourselves, we can just refer people to the Internet, and they can get a lot of information. So we moved to East Grinstead because we were working with churches together, and they were very concerned about the town and the infiltration of the town by a testing bookshop that was on the high street. So they used my leaflet and they had what was called a silent vigil. They went out um, almost every day, someone from some different church would stand outside and just be there silently and give the leaflets to people who passed by which caused a huge reaction, as you can imagine. Um, and actually at that time, I, I knew the mayor of East Grinstead quite well. And he said, would I come and brief the town council, which I did. And at that point, about 1994, the town council really didn't have much knowledge of Scientology. And what I had found out was that they had so kindly offered to do the website for the town. Um, if we click on church, it led you to the whole of the Scientology website. So when I did a PowerPoint with the council, I pointed out to them, maybe you would like to go home and click on your website because you're now connected to the entire church Scientology website worldwide, which they weren't aware of. My visits to St. Hill were, I'm afraid, not friendly. We went to St. Hill because we had some Africans who had been recruited in Harare in Zimbabwe, and we had actually rescued someone who had left St. Hill. And then at, at that point, we had several people come out from different countries, and one of those people they had kept passports, so we had to go up to St. Hill to get the passport. And, and they were not happy to see me. And I was accompanied by a local vicar, Stephen Bowen, who came with me. And he was, wasn't actually received very well, but um, we managed. They, they actually, when we arrived, I asked for the passport. And Osa came over to reception. And I said, can I just have the passport, please? And they said, no, because we've called the police because they accused this young man of theft. So the police came, but kind of probably unbeknownst to them, that I used to do quite a bit of work with police 
to help when people had psychotic episodes at St. Hill. I could help them. And so the policeman came in and said, Bonnie, can we see you outside? And they said, what's the problem? I said, we need his passport. So they said, okay. So they went back in and they said, can we please have his passport and we'll take him in the car. In our 26 years, Richard and I probably spoke to a thousand families. Um, so that's how we got to the point where we could help people get out. So we started Escape in 1992. And then when we lived in East Grinstead, we had this young man who escaped from Scientology um, one evening and ended up in a shelter for the homeless. And they were familiar with what we did. So they called me and said, Bonnie, can you come to East Grinstead to talk to this young man? Which I did. Now it turned out that he had two friends who were still inside. Um, and they wanted to come out. And so we picked up two more, Nick and William. And we, unfortunately, they'd been so scared that they didn't bring their personal belongings. So the the pastor that was with me from Turner Hill Free Church, he said, that's okay, we'll just go get their things. And I said, well, it might not be quite that easy. But off we went, and it was a Saturday morning, which is when they used to have a couple of hours of liberty. And so he went in, and, and the man from the kitchen came out and said, who are you? And he said, I'm the reverend, and I'm just here visiting the boys. And they said, oh, well, you should be here. He said, well, why don't you call up and find out if I could have a pastoral visit? And so they, he went back out. And when he came back out again, he said, I can't call St. Hill because the phone's not working. So then we were able to get their personal belongings. And we had many, many families in East Grinstead and Chichester. We had what I would call a underground railroad. And we would move them from East Grinstead to Chichester. And then we went up to London to their embassies and found out why they were being recruited in in Ethiopia and in Zimbabwe yeah. and yeah. Uganda and shut the doors. My name is Stephen Jones and I used to be a Scientologist. I joined the Sea Org in 1986. Um, this is at Saint Hill in East Grinstead. I had this idea that Scientology would enable people to be better people, you know, kinder, gentler, um, more decent people. It was some of the most vicious things I've ever seen at that time occurred while I was in the Sea Org. Just to give you an idea of what it was like, uh, we'd start at 9.30 in the morning and work through to 12. And when I say 12, I don't mean 12 lunchtime, I mean 12 midnight. That was the standard day. Um, if we were good, we got Saturday mornings off. If we were really good, we got the whole Saturday off. But in a year and a half, I never got the whole Saturday off. Um, I was told that the minimum wage you get every week would be £18 a week. That was later increased to £23 a week. So I was told that was the minimum. So you should get bonuses on top of that. We, I think I got the minimum wage about twice in the uh, year and a half that I was there, just twice. More commonly, you'd get between 5 and £10 if you were lucky. Many weeks, we didn't get anything at all. For the last few years, of my time in Scientology, which was about 22 years, I was very, very unhappy. I was, at some points, I was in the most deepest despair you, you can ever imagine. I remember one time I came out of an auditing session and there was all this activity of putting up a tent to one side of the castle because they were going to have this big event called for the International Association of Scientologists. And there was a lot of traffic, and there was a big articulated lorry reversing back very slowly, I mean, literally three or four miles an hour, no more than that. And I was standing on the steps by the castle, I was looking down, and I could see these huge wheels just slowly turning, and I just thought I could just walk forward lie down in front of those wheels, and that would be all my suffering be over. So when you see them handing out these booklets and getting mayors and city council men and women, you know, all these people that are showing up 
to Scientology events under the guise of they're in my district or they're of a religion too, should know you're being played. And don't take our word for it. You can read, go to Mike's blog, read Alex's story, go to all every science ex, uh, Scientologist whistleblower, their websites, and it's all there. Everything L. Ron Hubbard has ever written is available to you. It's available to government agencies. Um, if I was a government agency, Mike, or uh, Alex, and I read these policies of infiltration of government agencies and the activities of Scientology that they have done, they've gone to prison for it, they continue to try to attempt it. If this was in writing by a foreign government about American government or even, you know, England, whatever, it doesn't matter, any democracy, I should say, right? Yep. Um, these people would be considered on a different list. The yeah, they'd be considered terrorists. The fact that city officials and government officials, are, um, uh, police officers, police departments, are so easily bought off by Tom Cruise is so embarrassing. It, they should be embarrassed of themselves, and those who vote for them should know that it is that bottom level disgusting that they get to meet Tom Cruise or they get their wife to meet Tom Cruise and they get laid for the first time in 10 years for doing so. Like these are the kind of people, just because they're a city official or a representative of the law or government, do not underestimate the power of celebrity. And David Miscavige knows this.